On the 21st of August 1939, the pocket battleship Admiral Graf Spee sailed in secrecy from her home port of Wilhelmshaven, placing herself conveniently in the South Atlantic to attack British merchant shipping during the early months of the war. And this she did, sinking a total of nine ships until on the morning of the 13th of December. For many weeks, the Royal Navy had been searching in vain for the Graf Bay, but soon, early on this Wednesday morning, Commodore Harwood's cruiser force of Ajax, Exeter and Achilles were to have their first contact. At 06.10 hours, smoke was sighted just above the horizon. The action with the Grass Bay had been broken off at 0740 hours, and by midnight she was anchored in the Monte di Veo roads, sailing into port early the following morning with her 37 dead and 57 wounded crew members. Damage was not so extensive as was that to HMS Exeter, for she had received seven major hits, and as she limped towards the Falkland Islands, some 60 officers and ratings were buried at sea. The Ajax and Achilles, damaged to a lesser extent, remained on station as the Navy sought desperately to rush reinforcements to the area. In the event, these reinforcements were not necessary, for regardless of them being unable to arrive in time, the Grass Bay sailed early in the evening of the fourth day heading towards the open sea, but upon reaching the river's estuary, she blew herself apart. HMS Achilles arrived back in New Zealand and in Auckland she received a tumultuous welcome. On a dull dreary day in February of 1940, HMS Ajax returned to her home port of Chatham, from which she had sailed two years previously under the command of uh, Captain Woodhouse. We all Woodhouse. consider ourselves very lucky to have had an opportunity of meeting an enemy ship at sea.
On an equally dull and drab day, the battered cruiser Exeter returned home to Plymouth, where Captain Bell and his crew were greeted by a large excited crowd. Certainly the Battle of the River Plate was a relatively small affair when compared to many other sea battles past and present. But it did give the people of this nation a wonderful uplift during that first dark, gloomy winter of war. Winston Churchill, who was then the first Lord of the Admiralty, was also present to ensure a maximum degree of morale would be extracted from the occasion in spite of Exeter's many battle scars being visible for all to see. On the 23rd of February, both ships' companies were honored and paraded in London to the Horse Guards Parade. It was a magnificent spectacle. Many captured British merchant seamen had been transferred from the Grass Bay to her supply ship Altmark, and en route back to Germany, she was intercepted in a Norwegian fjord and boarded by the destroyer Cossack. This brief excerpt from a German newsreel clearly shows their displeasure. den die Geschichte der neuen Zeit kennt. Der deutsche Dampfer Altmark wurde von dem englischen Zerstörer Cossack gegen jedes Völkerrecht mitten im Kürsingfjord tief in den norwegischen Gewässern überfallen. 
Sieben deutsche Seemänner wurden ermordet, einer wird vermisst und viele andere wurden durch die heimtückischen Schüsse der englischen Seeräuber schwer verletzt. Ein Taucher untersucht die Schäden, die das Schiff erlitten hat. Die wilde Schießerei, mit der die Briten die unbewaffnete Altmark überfielen, hinterließ überall Einschlagspuren. Arriving at Leith on the 17th of February, the Cossack had on board 299 liberated prisoners. Her name and that of her commander, Captain Vian, became a legend. an imprisonment for about nine weeks, our great moment came at about half past ten at night, when after a few hours of tense expectation, we heard the hatch being uh, opened and a cheerful British voice calling down, are any Englishmen down below? Yes, we shouted, and we're a British warship come to rescue you, he told us. We cheered loudly, we got all our arrangements made, we filed up on deck and there were the Navy in complete control, all the Marines with Germans in front of them, the Marines with fixed bayonets. Everything was orderly and arranged perfectly. Waited on deck, then the destroyer came charging alongside. We came right up the side of the ship, we clambered aboard, and there we had a great welcome from these great gallant fellows who'd made this wonderful and courageous attempt which had succeeded in rescuing us from our very unpleasant position. Three cheers for the lads on the Cossack and the British Navy for the smart way in which they saved us. And God bless them. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Late on the night of the 23rd of October, 1941, HMS Cossack, being some miles west of Gibraltar, was hit by a torpedo which removed her bow, foremast, and part of the bridge. Four days later, she foundered with the loss of her commander and 158 officers and ratings. It was indeed going to be a long and hard war for the Royal Navy.